Welcome to Microbiology. I'm Dr. Kaiser, and I'll be teaching your lecture portion of the course and the lab portions for labs CN1, CO1, and CR1. We're going to use this uh, Zoom video lecture to talk about your Blackboard site and the running of the course, so you become familiar with that. Before we get into the announcements, um, let me mention one thing on your menu over here at the left, and that's the course calendar that you'll be referring to a lot. If you click on that, that will bring up the calendar for, your, uh, for the course during the semester. And notice in the calendar that it tells you what we're doing each day. And it's also an interactive calendar where you can link to the lectures we're covering that day or the labs we're covering that day. And it also shows you when all uh, lecture exams and lab quizzes and due dates are. So for example, notice in September here, uh, on Wednesday the 2nd or Thursday the 3rd, depending on which section you're in, you see that we're doing Unit 1, Lecture 1. So it tells you what we're doing in lecture that day. That means if you click on this, that will take you to the soft chalk lessons that are covered in that day's lecture. In this case, unit one, lecture one. So we're gonna cover these two soft chalk lessons. And it's your job to keep up with these soft chalk lessons, keep up with them according to the course calendar. If we go back to the calendar, and look at our next meeting on Tuesday the 8th or Wednesday the 9th, again, depending on your section, we see that we're doing Unit 1, Lecture 2. This was Unit 1, Lecture 1. This is Unit 1, Lecture 2. So again, if you click on that, this is Unit 1, Lecture 2. These are the three soft chalk lessons we'll be doing that day. And on down the line, it'll take us five lecture periods to cover Unit 1. Now also you'll see on here that it tells you what labs we're doing each day. So for example, on uh, Tuesday the 8th or Wednesday the 9th, we're doing lab one. Uh, this is for everything except my CRW section. They have their own calendar. So you'll check that calendar to see what days you're doing that since they meet on Wednesday and Friday. And I haven't put that on this course calendar. So again, if you click on the lab scheduled for that day, lab one, that will take you to the lab manual and take you to the lab we're doing that day. Likewise, if we move on to our second lab, we'll be doing that on the 10th or the 14th. So if we click on lab two, that'll take you to the lab we're doing that day, lab two. So one way you can get to the course content, both your lecture content and your lab content for that day, is to refer to the course calendar. Also notice it tells you in red when uh, the various due dates. So for example, the last day to take your course tour quiz on Blackboard is Friday, September 4th. Uh, this tells you that we're doing safety training. Uh, you're going to be doing online safety training, but we'll talk about a little bit on that, those days. Uh, your take home or biology review exam tells you when that is due, the 17th or the 21st, for everything except my um, CRW section, which again has their own calendar. Last day to drop with the 50% 50, 50 refund or change to audit, uh, audit is September 18th. Lab quiz one will be on September 24th or September 28th. Unit one exam, the dates, those are there. So again, as you go through here, you see what we're doing in lecture each day, what we're doing in lab, and that will connect you to those lectures and those labs, and when all the quizzes are or the unit exams are. So that is your course calendar. So I want to point that out at the beginning because you'll be using the lab. That's your schedule for the course. Now, before we get into the real welcome stuff and explaining what we're doing the first week, there's a whole bunch of announcements I've been posting because of these strange times we're in with the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic going on. Uh, of course, when you come to campus, you have to be screened before you're allowed on campus. Uh, there will be 
uh, safety monitors either on the roads or in the lab buildings or both and they will do the screening. Now one way you can speed that up is you can load in the app, the screening app for that. And this tells you where you can load in the screening lab. So if you fill that in ahead of time, uh, when you come before you come to campus, you can show them the green screen that shows you've answered all the questions and you're able to come on campus. They'll take your temperature. And if all that checks out, you'll be given the smiley face sticker for that day, which you have to wear while you're on campus that shows that you have been screened for COVID-19 uh, possibilities. I have added that we've added goggles to the personal protective equipment that we'll be using on the slides where we make our own bacterial slides and observe them through the microscope. Most of the time we'll be wearing face shields instead of goggles, but the goggles will be worn in the labs where we can't use the face shield because you can't use the microscope with the face shield on. So that'll be for selective labs. Uh, you will have to purchase your own goggles from the bookstore. College also wants to uh, reiterate the course format for this semester. So the course format for BIO 230 is called lecture lab format. They're also called modalities. And that means that the lecture is offered remotely, but lab is on campus face to case. And that's scheduled during the normally scheduled lab times for your section, which are repeated down here and also of course on your syllabus. Now there are technical requirements that you will need for this course because the lecture instructions are offered remotely. You're gonna need a reliable computer, either a desktop or a laptop or a netbook. Uh, mobile devices, namely smartphones, aren't really reliable for using for online course. And it must have a camera feature that allows you to take your, uh, some of your exams using Respondus Monitor with webcam. The college has a requirement that a certain percentage of grade has to be a monitored exam. And we're doing that using Respondus Monitor with webcam. Uh, you'll need a stable broadband internet connection, of course. A, CBC, a CCBC email account, which you already have because you're enrolled in your course, and of course your Blackboard site, which you also have because you're enrolled in the course. And there's a list of various technical requirements if you want more information on this link. So again, the labs will meet at these times for the various sections on campus. The lectures are pre-recorded Zoom lectures. They are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Also, it's going to be essential in lab that you wear the, pos uh, the proper personal protective equipment or PPE. And that includes these following. You will need a full length lab coat, one that you can button all the way up. Those can be purchased at the CCB bookstore, although you can also order them online as long as it's a full length lab coat. To come on campus, you need a face mask that covers both your nose and mouth. You will have to provide the face mask. And again, that has to be worn the entire time you're on campus. In lab, you'll also require a face shield, which we will provide. And that has to be worn the entire time you're in lab. The only exception will be a couple, uh, will be three labs where we use microscopes and one lab where we're adding reagents. Uh, where we need the splash resistant goggles because of the nature of that lab. You're going to need gloves. We'll provide the gloves. These are nitro gloves. They don't contain latex. Goggles, which you can purchase in the CCB bookstore, and shoes that cover both your toes and the entire top of your foot. And students who don't uh, follow these proper PPE requirements will not be permitted to enter the lab, no exceptions. Now, I taught a face-to-face -face micro labs during summer session, and uh, I will tell you that the face mask and the face shield and the lab coat uh, and the gloves become very uncomfortable to wear in the lab. Uh, we have to put up with that being uncomfortable. The biggest problem, again, is fogging up, although with the face shields, uh, generally they begin to fog up initially, but then after you wear them a while, they stop fogging up. Uh, in the case of glasses or goggles, that's the same problem you have anytime you wear a face mask, that does sometimes become a problem. But again, these are provided added protection in face-to-face -face labs. 
since we don't have way to keep a six foot distance in our lab, which has 18 people in it, the face shields are the added protection that take the place of say the plexiglass that you would see between you and the uh, person running the checkout counter at the grocery store or uh, the drugstore. So the masks have to be worn properly. They need to cover the entire nose and mouth. So they have to be worn correctly. And the face shield must be worn all the way down so it's protecting your face and eyes. So again, they are somewhat uncomfortable, but they do provide that added protection. Keep in mind that with COVID-19, uh, people are able to spread the virus to others two to three days before they become symptomatic. And there are a fair number of people who become infected who never develop symptoms but still can spread the virus. So that's stopping you from spreading viruses even though you may not know you have the infection yet to others and protects the other people uh, from your viruses. So the face masks and the face shields do provide good protection. And you also have to remember to socially distance as much as possible in the hallway before you enter lab, keeping six feet apart, and as much as possible in the lab. So again, don't congregate together while you're picking up your uh, baggies containing your lab coats and face shields and all your PPE. Uh, try to keep a fair distance. When you go to the incubators, again, try to keep a six foot distance so you're not crowded together. Now, of course, in a number of the labs will be working in small groups, usually pairs. And so you will be getting closer to other people. Uh, we can't keep six feet away and work together on doing a lab. And of course, on a few labs, I'll have to come around and help you with things or check out things. So we want to keep the distance as best we can in the lab and uh, make sure you're wearing the face mask and the face shield. And if you have questions regarding uh, social distancing and the policies of CBC, uh, CCBC, there's a link here to frequently ask questions regarding COVID-19 uh, precautions. Now, as mentioned, we'll be doing our lectures virtually. That's our next announcement. I've made Zoom videos of all my lectures, and these are similar to the way I would present them if you're coming to campus for class. So I use my soft chalk lessons in lecture rather than PowerPoint, which is also what you're using for your textbook. And I'll go through them as I would normally would in a lecture. However, the Zoom lectures have a little added information. Um, during normal lectures, when we have face-to-face -face class lectures, I usually hit highlights because of the time limitations. I don't cover every word on every page, obviously. Uh, there are sections during a normal semester when we would be meeting face-to-face -face for lecture where um, I will have, uh, would have sections that you read on your own because it's just terminology. But I've, uh, in my Zoom lectures, I've gone through every lecture uh, from beginning to end. So it gives you a little more information, although it takes longer than an hour and 20 minutes uh, to review some of the soft chalk lessons for that day. So to find the Zoom video lectures, you're going to click on lecture in your Blackboard menu and scroll down to the Zoom videos for that particular unit we're covering. And let me show you where that can be found. So there's two ways you can get, uh, there's one way to get to the Zoom video lectures. As we said, if we go to our Blackboard menu up here and we click on lecture, uh, you see here that these are the materials for unit one, our first five lectures worth of material. These are the materials for unit two, unit three, four, five, and six. Those are the six units we have during our class. So let's go back up to unit one that we'll be starting when we start classes uh, beginning August 31st, the week of August 31st. Now, first of all, there's two ways you can get to your soft chalk lessons. One is by clicking on them in the class calendar uh, that I showed you. But the other way is to go to lecture where we are now and click here where it says soft chalk lessons for unit one. That will take you to the same menu that's on the course calendar. So those are two ways to access your 
soft chalk lessons. Now, as far as the videos, they're underneath that. So these are the Zoom videos of the soft chalk lessons for unit one. Uh, these are the soft chalk lessons for uh, unit one, lecture one. That's two soft chalk lessons. These are the three soft chalk lessons for unit two, uh, lecture two. And these are the four soft chalk lessons for uh, unit one, lecture three, et cetera, till we get down to the end. So if you click on each one of those, that will either take you to a YouTube video, a site where I posted the videos or in some of the later lectures to the Zoom cloud site itself to get them. So click on that to view your Zoom video lectures. So these Zoom video lessons, of course, supplement your online soft chalk lessons that you're using as your textbook for the course. And again, it's very important that at the very least you keep up with doing the lectures according to your class calendar. That means uh, listen to the Zoom lectures, go through the soft chalk lessons, um, answer and learn the detailed learning objectives for each soft chalk lessons that you'll be tested on. And again, it's very important to keep up with that. The biggest reason that people are unsuccessful in the course, which most people aren't, is procrastination. You really have to keep up with this every week. There's way too much material to try to learn a week before the exam. So you wanna keep up with your class calendar, with your lectures, uh, watching your Zoom videos, going through the soft chalk lessons, and um, answering the detailed learning objectives that I'll show you in a little while when I show you how the soft chalk lessons work. And if possible, try to get at least a lecture ahead of the class calendar. If you can keep ahead of where we are, that you're gonna really appreciate that by the time the final exam rolls around. Now let me explain a little bit how the soft chalk lessons work while we're here. So let's go back to and load in one of these soft chalk lessons. So again, if we go to lecture, soft chalk lessons for unit one. Oops, let me get, I have to click that so it displays. There we go little delay on the computer there. Uh, so let me pick out one of these soft chalk lessons and show you how they work. And let me move down to one we'll be doing our third lecture period of the semester that deals with the peptidoglycan cell wall and bacteria. That's a fairly typical, uh, somewhat longer soft chalk lesson. So if we click on that particular soft chalk lesson, Let's show you how you're going to be using these. So on your overview page, it tells you the topic we're covering that day. And the first thing you'll notice is that our first thing we'll look at are bullet points for that particular soft chalk lesson, this one here on the peptidoglycan cell wall, and your detailed learning objectives you need to know for the exams. Now, when you load in the soft chalk lesson, there's a uh, contents bar to the right here where you can skip to different sections. But uh, what you might want to do so that you have a larger view on the page is to click the three bars at the top. That's a toggle switch and that it will remove the table contents for that lecture. If you want to see them again, you can click that, they come back on. But if you have that off, that will widen the page, make it easier to view. So every soft chalk lesson begins with fundamental statements for that lesson the important bullet points for that lesson. So you want to start out by reading these bullet points and read them fairly slowly so you realize these are the main uh, bullet points we're going to try to cover in greater detail as we go through this lesson. After you do that, then notice the next part are called detailed learning objectives for that lesson. So every lesson has these detailed learning objectives. These are the performance objectives you need to learn for the exam you'll be tested on these detailed learning objectives. And you'll notice a number of different types here. 
Uh, but notice the first one, state the three parts of a peptidoglycan monomer and state the function of peptidoglycan. So again, you'll need to know that. Uh, notice some of them have a single asterisk after them. And that means that's a common theme throughout the course. Uh, you can't forget that after unit one, you're gonna have to know that all semester long. For example, number four here says, state what color gram-positive bacteria stain after gram staining. We'll learn that they stain purple, but you have to know that all semester long because we'll be talking about the gram stain all semester long and using that in lab all semester long. And then some of them have two asterisks after them. And these are typically uh, detailed learning objectives that cover processes we have to understand. In this case, briefly describe how bacteria synthesize peptidoglycan, indicating the roles of autolysins, bactoprenols, transglycosylases, and transpeptidases. So these are in more depth. They're also a common theme throughout the course that we have to know. And there would often be multiple questions on these double asterisk objectives. One of the ones I like to ask on these are multiple true-false questions. Let's see if you really understand the process or you're just looking for words that look familiar. Uh, so that does require a good understanding of those objectives. Uh, many of the lectures have TPS questions during the normal face-to-face -face lectures that we traditionally have. I would go through some of these in class and get you to uh, work with someone and answer them based on what we just covered and then discuss them in class. Uh, of course, that's going to be impossible to do exactly like that when we're doing virtual lectures. Uh, but occasionally during my office hours, I'll bring up some of these TPS questions. But again, you should be able to answer these questions once you finish uh, this soft chalk lesson. So as you go through these, you want to look for key words. Uh, for example, as we'll see in Unit 2, the antibiotic bacitracin binds to bactoprenol, and that tells you how it works. You need to explain how this leads to death of the bacterium. So again, you want to look for key words in this soft chalk lesson. Look at where we talk about um, what bactoprenol does. That's one of the parts of our objective up here. And if you read that section, that tells you then how specifically interfering with bacteroprenol is going to interfere with peptidoglycan synthesis and what that leads to, how that leads to death. Uh, another one says that penicillins bind to transpeptidase. So again, if we look at the key words, we see that that is part of an objective. If you look at what transpeptidase does for the bacterium in synthesizing peptidoglycan, then you can figure out what happens if that enzyme doesn't work and how that leads to death of the bacterium. So the first page, again, will be your fundamental statements or bullet points you want to read and the detailed learning objectives. And most successful students go through and write out the objectives, and as they go through the soft chalk lesson, they answer them. That way, you're providing a number of senses to help you learn. Of course, the very worst way to learn is to read something over and over again because you don't retain it well that way. But if you're writing out the objective of what you need to know for the exam, and then you write out the answer, you're providing the writing memory or muscle memory that helps store the information in one part of the brain. You're reading it, that's stored in another part. You're looking at illustrations, photographs, and especially uh, many, many uh, animations I've made where you can visualize the process. And all that, using those different senses, helps you to learn that. So again, you don't want to use a hard copy uh, that you can uh, if you printed one out for your studying purposes, you want to use the actual soft chalk lesson. And then we get into the next part, which is the actual lesson itself. So these are divided into sections. We've broken the soft chalk lesson into workable sections. This one is only about half a page long. Uh, one of your objectives was to state the function of peptidoglycan. And it's right here. It prevents osmotic lysis. Now, the reason I like soft chalk lessons is that they're very interactive. There's mouse, mouth over, mouse over definitions that you can uh, click on. And I have lots of boxes that link you to other sites. Now, one of the things I have throughout these lessons are these yellow boxes. 
which either review material you've already covered in case you have some questions on that. So for example, when we talk about peptidoglycan, we say that it lies uh, external to the cytoplasmic membrane, which was the soft chalk lesson that preceded this one on peptidoglycan. So if you weren't sure about something in that, you click on that, that would take you back to that soft chalk lesson. Others will be previews of things we're gonna cover later that we're mentioning there. Again, you don't have to click on these yellow boxes. They're there if you need them or you become curious. Then we go to the next page, which is the structure and composition of peptidoglycan. Again, we have the mouse over definitions, and now we get into lots of illustrations and animations. So uh, first of all, this one shows you what the peptidoglycan monomers, another one of your objectives, look like. Uh, so if you click on that, you can see illustrations. Of course, anytime you see something like this, you don't have to know chemical structures, but this shows you uh, what the, the illustrations and the diagrams coming up in the animations look like. And if you want to view the text that goes with that illustration, you can click there, and that will take you to that. Uh, if you click off that, that'll remove it. Uh, this is one on the structure of peptidoglycan. And again, you can view the text that goes with that. And I've also included a YouTube animation on peptidoglycan if you want to view that. Now notice at the end of this short part of the lecture, part B, whenever you see this box, that means that that's a self quiz you can do to see if you understand that particular section of that lecture. If you click on that, That'll give you a short quiz you can do. These are not graded, they're self quizzes to see if you understand what we just covered. So you wanna go through and read and study that section of that soft chalk lesson and then answer a couple of questions, see if you really understand it. Uh, so the first one, the function of peptidoglycan, uh, peptide crosslinks. The second one composed of NAM, NANG, and pentapeptide, that describes what. So again, if you've gone through there, you should be able to answer these correctly. Now, what you don't want to do is skip all the information and just go through and keep clicking on until you find the answer to the quizzes. While some of these questions uh, might appear on your lecture exam, at most it would only be 20, 25% of the exam. And of course, that wouldn't be enough to pass the exam. So you want to use these as true self quizzes. If you can answer those after you've read that section and studied it, then at least that shows that you have a a pretty good idea, at least of some of the terminology involved. Then we go to the next page. And this is the one where we have that double asterisk objective on synthesis of peptidoglycan and bacteria. And this takes you through the various steps involved and uh, that objective said, you should describe the synthesis of peptidoglycan indicating the function of autolysins. Oops, went past it, sorry about there. Uh, bactoprenols, transglycosylases, and transpeptidases. So again, you can pretty much see the answer to the objectives by going through there. And since this is a process, in addition to illustrations, uh, more useful will be the animations I've made. Uh, so, for example, the first one deals with autolysins. What do they do in the synthesis of peptidoglycan? And this animation shows you the role of autolysins in the synthesis. Whereas you go through the animation, you get to see step by step what's going on. So once it gets all labeled, you're ready to start. And you can read what it says in the box and then click and see how the autolysis in this case are breaking the glycosidic bonds between the sugars and the peptide crosslinks, which will all make sense once you start studying this. And then this shows the function of the bactoprenols. Again, there's an illustration showing that, but also an animation that shows that step by step. The role of transglycosylases, an illustration and an animation. The role of transpeptidase, an illustration and an animation. And then this one summarizes the whole process from beginning to end. So again, by the time you go through that, you read it, you study it a little, you look at the animations and follow them, 
then you should be able to answer that double asterisk objective on the synthesis of peptidoglycan. Now, one of the other things I've included in every soft chalk lesson are concept maps. And they're in the green boxes here. The concept maps are really good for reviewing once you've studied and learned your detailed learning objectives, because it summarizes pretty much everything you need to know on one page, along with links where you can look at illustrations and animations. On many of these, you have to right click on them to get them to appear. So if you right click there, you can open that in a new window. And this is the concept map for this whole soft chalk lesson on peptidoglycan synthesis, starting out with its function, what bacteria contain it, a description of what peptidoglycan is, what the peptidoglycan monomers are, what the peptide crosslinks do, and then how bacteria synthesize peptidoglycan, indicating the role of autolysins, bactoprenol, transglycosylases, transpeptidases. If you click on any of these boxes, that will take you to animations that were there. So again, these are interactive concept maps where you can use this to uh, look at pictures and illustrations and such. So the concept maps are a rather useful uh, way to um, sum, uh, summarize all the material in that lesson, the key material, and is very good for reviewing. Uh, these don't print out well because there's too much information to fit on a printed page, but they work very good online. And again, at the end of this section on synthesis of peptidoglycan, there's another self-check. You can do a matching question on the process. Then we move on to the next page, uh, describing how some of our antimicrobial agents like antibiotics inhibit pe peptidoglycan synthesis in bacteria, causing the bacteria to lyse due to osmotic pressure. And again, it shows you some illustrations and animations of how some of those work. And again, throughout, I have the link to the concept map. So as you get through different sections, you can look at different parts of the concept map. And again, there's a little self quiz you can do on that and then check your answers. And the final section of our soft chalk lesson on peptidoglycan cell wall and bacteria tells us that we can divide bacteria into three groups based on staining reactions, the gram stain and the acid fast stain. So those three groups are gram positive, gram negative, and acid fast. And this explains that and shows you pictures of how gram positive stain purple, gram negative stain pink, and acid fast bacteria stain a reddish or fuchsia color with the acid fast stain. And again, a little self quiz you can do there. And the final page of every soft chalk lesson is a self quiz over the entire lection. So this is rather than just being a quiz on the section you just reviewed is on the whole soft chalk lesson on peptidoglycan synthesis. And so again, we have a number of quiz questions you can use to practice and we have an identify activity you can do as well. So again, you wanna start out by reading the uh, bullet points or fundamental statements. Make sure you're answering your detailed learning objectives as you go through the lesson. Make sure you're doing all the self quizzes and the activities that are provided in the soft chalk lesson. Make sure you're looking at the illustrations and animations. And of course, you can also use the concept map uh, to help you review the material. So that's how the soft chalk lessons work uh, that you'll be using as your textbook. Getting back to our announcements after the one on how you do the virtual lesson lectures, which I've just explained to you where to find them and how the soft chalk lessons work. Uh, for the unit exams and for your major lab quizzes, your five major lab quizzes, you're going to be using Respondus Monitor with webcam uh, to do those. Let me just uh, 
turn off the editing here so that you can see stuff better. So your lecture unit exams and your, that's uh, units one, two, three, four, and your final exam, which covers units five and six only. And then your five lab quizzes, you'll be using Respondus Monitor with webcam. Uh, you don't need a password for that. But for some of the quizzes you're taking, you don't need Respondus at all. For the Getting Started Course Tour quiz, which we'll talk about in a minute, your general biology review exam, and your pre-lab quizzes that you do prior to certain labs that cover laboratory techniques based on YouTube videos I've made. These are all taken just directly on Blackboard. You don't need Respondus for that. All you have to do is quick click on the link and it'll take you right to the quiz. And I'll show you those as we go through here. Now you'll need to, respond, uh, need to install Respondus Lockdown Browser and the webcam information on your computer. If you click on this link, that'll take you to the Blackboard page on how to download uh, Respondus Lockdown Browser if you don't already have that on your computer. Also note that Respondus Monitor is currently not compatible with Google Chromebook. Uh, we've heard that by the end of the year, they hope to have this compatible with Chromebook, but right now it isn't. So you're gonna need a laptop or a tablet or a computer uh, that isn't Google Chromebook to use Respondus Lockdown Browser and respond as monitor with that. The college is working on trying to find ways to uh, help students who may have some problems with that. They're looking at having computer labs open, uh, and these also will have a camera on them and respond as monitor on them. Uh, so it might be possible eventually if you don't have the ability to take this at home, which you're supposed to, to take the course, but uh, they might have some spaces available there. They're looking at having labs available again so you can use the Wi-Fi there. They're looking at having hotspots in parking lots so you can use the Wi-Fi there. And there's also a program with Comcast, but we don't have all the information yet <coughs> where <coughs> they're providing uh, very reasonable internet access and are providing uh, laptops with um, cameras. And if we get more information on that, I'll give that to you. But again, one of the requirements this semester says at the beginning is that you need to have a uh, either a dependable computer, a laptop, uh, or a desktop computer, or a tablet other than Google Chromebook. And it has to have a camera associated with it so you can use Respondus uh, monitor with webcam. Uh, as far as office hours, what I've decided to do here is that since uh, lecture was originally scheduled right after lab when we, there was the possibility that, that we might be able to have in-class lectures. Uh, so since you already registered for that time period and have that time period free, I'm going to hang around for about 20 minutes after every lab uh, so that you can ask questions. Those will be in-person office hours that will meet in our micro lab. So when lab's over, if you have any questions, you want to ask or anything you want me to go through, uh, you can uh, stop it at any of these times listed here. And then giving you some time to get home, I'm also going to have Zoom office hours, again, during roughly the lecture time, but it'll go a little bit later, uh, where you can log in anytime and ask questions as well. And of course, anytime you have any specific questions, you can email me. Make sure you use my CCBC email, not Blackboard email. So don't ask questions via Blackboard. Make sure you go to my college um, email, which is gkaiser at ccbcmd.edu. I check that several times every day and during the weekends, and I answer questions on the weekends. If you're going to participate in Zoom office hours, you will need to download or uh, sign up for a free Zoom account, not download, but sign up, and that tells you how there. Uh, about the only extra credit we have in the course are optional crossword puzzles. For each of our six units we cover in lecture, there's a crossword puzzle. For each of our five lab quizzes, there's an optional crossword puzzle. And I'll show you where they, those are in a little while. Uh, but right now, I'm going to have you submit those to me by email. Normally, you would hand them in when you take the exam. But since we're taking our lab quizzes and our lecture exams using Respondus, 
uh, you'll have to email me your crossword puzzles. Again, make sure you email them to my CCBC email account and make sure you specify uh, in the subject line uh, what lab section you're in and which uh, of the exams or crossword puzzles you're submitting, whether it's unit one exam crossword puzzle or lab quiz one crossword puzzle. And again, make sure you have your lab section in. I have four different lab sections and it's a real pain to have to go through all four of them to try to find your name when I record that. So again, if you have that in the subject line, that'll make it much easier. So those are all kind of stuff that relates to the fact that we're now in a pandemic and we have to take a lot of extra different precautions and use alternate uh, learning tools to do the course. So with all of that underway, now let's get into finally the welcome to microbiology. This would normally be the first announcement you see uh, when you open up the site. So I want to go through and explain uh, this announcement because it has a lot of important information in it. Now hopefully by now you've already read all of this. I've already told you that your Blackboard site is available and to make sure you go through and read all the announcements carefully. But what I normally do the first week of class in lab is actually go through this Blackboard site in lab itself. Now, first of all, this is the Blackboard page for my section CN1. So any dates you see down here are for this lab section. When you click on your course site, like CO1 or CR1 or CRW, the dates you see here will be specific for your section. So remember, this is just the page for section CN1, uh, but I'll use that as an illustration. So again, I've been doing this for a while. This is my 51st year teaching here at CCBC, and I can't really imagine not doing this, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to get through this a couple more years. Uh, the first thing is something you have to finish the first week of class, the due date for your getting started course tour quiz is Friday, September 4th at 1159 p.m. So you're going to read your getting started course tour link, which is a soft chalk lesson, and then take a quiz on that getting started course tour uh, on Blackboard. And you have to have that submitted by 1159 p.m. Friday, September 4th. And I'll show you where to find that in just a second. It also tells you here, of course, you're going to go to the menu, click on Getting Started Course Tour, uh, go through that, and then click on Getting Started Quiz. You'll be taking that on Blackboard. It doesn't require a respondus. Don't forget at the very end, there's a blue box at the bottom that says Save and Submit. Uh, if you don't click that, then it doesn't get submitted but also be very careful you don't hit that ahead of time because once you hit save and submit, it submits it to me and you can't take it anymore. You finished with it. So again, you don't wanna hit that till you're ready to submit, but when you're done, make sure you do hit that save and submit button. So let's show you where you find the getting started course tour material. Let's go back up to our Blackboard menu at the very top here. So this link is your getting started course tour. If you click on that, that'll take you to a soft chalk lesson. And you wanna go through and uh, carefully read all of that. Now, since uh, you're getting started course tour quiz is an open book quiz, you're not using Respondus. Uh, you can also have the quiz loaded on one browser and the soft chalk lesson on the other. So as you go through this, you can answer quiz questions. But you wanna go through and read each one of these sections. And once you're satisfied you know that, then if we go to the second link under, the next link under that, Getting Started Tour Quiz, click on that, and click on that link. This tells you that this is your Getting Started Quiz for your Getting Started Course Tour. Uh, tells you you can save it and resume it later. Uh, just don't hit the submit button because again, if you hit the submit button, it's submitted. It also tells you that unlike unit exams and most of our quizzes, uh, this does allow multiple attempts. So I have unlimited attempts on your getting started quiz tour quiz because I want to make sure you understand how the course works and where you find stuff and uh, some of our policies in the course. 
So you can take that as many times as you want to, you earn all 27 points that that is worth. It also tells you that the due date is September 4th, 11.59 p.m. So once you're ready to take the quiz, you would hit continue. And you'll see the quiz loaded in. You can go through and answer each question. Usually when you click an answer, it will save it automatically, but you can also save it manually there. But again, don't hit this bottom button until you're done. When you've finished the whole quiz, 27 questions, then hit save and submit. And the grade will automatically appear under my grades in Blackboard. If you decide you want to take it again, you can just load it in again and try it again. And the highest grade is the one that's recorded, as long as it's finished by the deadline date. So that's the first thing in the welcome announcement down here. A lot of scrolling because of all these extra announcements. So that's your getting started course tour and your getting started quiz. Now another thing you're going to do during the first two weeks of class is a biology review exam. You're going to review the molecular genetic sections from your fundamentals of biology course that you had as a prerequisite. Namely that deals with uh, proteins, enzymes, DNA, what it's composed of, how it replicates, RNA, what it's composed of, how it's made, uh, protein synthesis, uh, detailed look at both transcription and translation, a little bit on mutation, and a little bit on uh, genetic recombination. So to review your biology material, you don't have to dig out your textbook from biology or your notes especially if you sold your textbook back, I provided you with soft chalk lessons that reviews that material. And after you review that material or as you're reviewing it, because again, this is an open book test that doesn't require respondus as you see here. Uh, you're gonna take the quiz. Uh, now the date the quiz is due is stated in the announcement for your lab section. So for sections, um, CN1 and C01, Tuesday and Thursday, that would be September 17th. Of course, for other sections, it will be a different time, and that would be in your announcement. But the test will also remind you of that. So the way you find that information is we go back up to our menu. We're looking for biology review exam. Sometimes it's called the take home exam because we used to take it home before we had the internet doing this. Here it is right here, biology review exam, right under your getting started stuff. If you click on that, this will take you to the soft chalk lessons you can use to review proteins, enzymes, DNA, DNA replication, RNA, transcription, translation, mutation, and horizontal gene transfer. Uh, this last one is, wasn't a part of your biology, but it's a few terms I want you to become familiar with early on. And we'll talk about this in detail in unit two but I want you to at least know the names of the mechanisms of horizontal gene transfer and bacteria from the beginning. So again, if you click on any one of these, that'll take you to a soft chalk lesson where you can review the material, set up like all my other soft chalk lessons. Uh, if you do wanna print a hard copy of that out, you can click there to print out a hard copy of your review material. So when you're ready to take the exam, then right under that is your molecular genetics review exam. Uh, it says Respondus Lockdown Browser. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that was there. You don't need Respondus for that. Uh, I'll try to remember to go back through and change that. Uh, no passwords needed. So if you click on this, it'll take you directly to the exam. You don't need Respondus for that. It tells you that the test can be saved and resumed later. This also allows multiple attempts, but multiple for your biology review exam means two attempts with highest grade recorded. So you do get two attempts on that, unlike your uh, most of uh, like all your other lecture exams and lab quizzes. It tells you the due date for the section you're currently working with. So again, once you're ready to go, you can click on continue and it'll load in the exam. Uh, you can do it piecemeal, you can come back to it uh, by, you can save answers, close the window, come back. But remember, don't hit that purple button until you're ready to submit it. Once you submit it, that's what gets graded, whether you finished it or not. 
So don't do that till the very end. Again, you get two attempts on that, the highest grade is recorded. So that's your biology review exam. Uh, the stuff about protein synthesis, transcription, translation, DNA, uh, you need to know how DNA replicates it. Adenine pairs with thymine, guanine pairs with cytosine. You need to know the structures of a protein, primary, secondary, tertiary structure of a protein. That's stuff you learn in biology because we do apply that a lot during the course. So I'll give you a chance to you get a chance to review that and get a lecture exam grade for that on stuff you already had that's an open book. That's a nice way to get things started. Let's get back to the announcements. So we've talked about the Getting Started course tour and the quiz. We've talked about the biology review exam and the review materials we just showed you. Now, many of the labs require you to view YouTube videos on laboratory techniques for that particular lab. I've made these YouTube videos so you can see how you perform the techniques. And it's important that you review those and understand them before you come to class. And as a way to kind of force you to do that, you have to take a pre-lab preparation quiz before that day's lab begins. Uh, no later than two hours before the start of that lab. So these can't be taken after the lab started. This is not a way to earn points if you didn't come to class. You can do these online if you miss class, you can still do them, but they have to be done before that day's lab. The whole purpose is not to uh, test you, but to make sure you're prepared for lab when you come in. So again, uh, this helps you to prepare for performing the lab correctly. And again, late quizzes aren't accepted. Uh, they have to be turned in at least two hours before the start of lab. So let me show you where you can find those. If we go back up to our menu here. And uh, this is done under course content. You'll notice down here, it says pre-lab quizzes. So those are the pre-lab quizzes based on the YouTube videos that you have to do before labs. Not all of the labs have a pre-lab quiz, but most of them do. Most have videos to watch and quiz take. So if you click on that, uh, this tells you that lab one does have a pretest, and these are the videos you need to watch. And that takes you to a link to that. Now, when you go to online lab manual, you see this as the first page of the lab that also gives you a link to those videos you need to review. Once you've reviewed those videos, and again, these are, you only get one attempt on these, but they are basically open book too. You don't need to use Respondus for that. As soon as you click on the pretest, it will load it in so you can take it. And again, it tells you they can be saved and resumed later. It gives you the due date for that particular one. And again, once you hit continue, it'll load in that particular pre-quiz. You can take the quiz. When you're all done with it, save and submit. But again, you only get uh, one attempt. Multiple attempts are not allowed. You can only take it once. Then we see that lab two has a pretest, and these are the videos you need to watch. Lab three has a pretest, and the videos you need to watch. Lab four, lab five, lab six all have pre quizzes. <coughs> now, notice there's not one for lab seven, so no pretest for lab seven. We do have one for lab eight based on these videos. Then we get a little break from lab eight. We don't have another one till lab 12 where we have a pretest in videos, lab 14, lab 15, and finally lab 18. We have a total of 19 labs that we do. So as you see, most of these labs do have pretests and videos to watch. But since I've started using those, uh, lab performance has gone up much better. Far fewer mistakes, people know what they're doing, and people are finishing lab on time. If you're not prepared to, for, uh, uh, for the lab, you may not finish in the allotted time that we have. So it's very important that you do these pretests and that you prepare for lab. Back to that announcement. So that was the last part of that, the pre-lab quizzes on my Welcome to Micro Lecture, the Getting Started Course Tour, the Biology Review Exam, and your pre-lab quizzes based on YouTube videos on lab techniques. Uh, you're gonna be doing your safety training online and you'll have to complete that by the second lab meeting of the first week of class. 
So um, you'll be taking this online. Now what you have to do is click on this link here and that will take you to a step-by-step -step of how to register for your safety training uh, program and your safety training quiz. Uh, so you click on courses and organizations and you click on organizations. You type in science safety training uh, over in the box where it says search and hit go. Then you make sure that you uh, do science safety training for students. So make sure you don't hit the one that says science safety training for faculty. That's a different one. We have to do yearly reviews of safety procedures as well. Uh, safety training for students. And then you hit enroll down here under the action items and you're enrolled in the course and submit it. Then you can go uh, and view the uh, safety training PowerPoint presentation and you can take your quiz. Uh, this tells you the procedure for watching your safety presentation and taking the quiz once you've enrolled. But you have to enroll first to take that following using this link. And this tells you step by step what you're going to do. Uh, so you'll be going to your Blackboard side, click on courses and organizations, then organizations, then science safety training for students. Select content from the menu on the left, select biology, then select microbiology, then select microbiology safety presentation Catonsville, and that'll give you your PowerPoint presentation. To take the safety quiz, then you uh, select microbiology laboratory safety quiz with agreement. Now, once you take that quiz, make sure you print uh, the quiz after you've completed it, the whole quiz with the agreement. You have to bring that signed agreement to, cl to uh, class before we can do lab one. So uh, if you have your safety training done by our first cl uh, class meeting of the semester, first lab meeting, you can bring it in then, but you have to have it done by the second class meeting of the semester. The third class meeting is when we do lab one. So you can't attend lab one unless you've uh, passed the safety training quiz. And to pass it, you have to have a grade of 80% or higher. If you take it and don't get an 80%, then you can retake it. But you have to keep retaking until you get 80% or higher. But again, you're not earning points on this, so don't go through and just clicking answers to get the right answers. This is telling you that you've been safety trained. This is a legal document saying that I have, I've trained myself on how to do this. And if you don't follow the safety uh, procedures in the lab, uh, you can lose core points. And if you continue not to do so, you can be dismissed from the class. Safety is very important in this class. We have to follow procedures. You have to know those procedures. Also want to point out an instruction here, important instructions for lab one. Now, for this particular section, CN1 and CO1, Lab 1 will be Tuesday, September 8th. Uh, it'll be on different days if you're in the other lab section. So, again, that date will appear here. Uh, but, again, it's important that you prepare for lab ahead of time, um, especially in terms of understanding bacterial shapes, arrangements, and forms. This is part A in your online lab manual. You want to go through the whole lab, of course, so you're ready, but be especially uh, familiar with part A. We're going to assume that you can answer these objectives before you come to class, that you should know the three basic shapes of bacteria. So that when I ask you, when you show me a slide, what is the shape, it's too late to say, what do you mean by shape? You're supposed to know the three basic shapes and recognize which one you have. If I ask you for an arrangement of a caucus, there are five different arrangements. So again, you have to know what the five arrangements are. Uh, as you see, they're Diplococcus, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Tetrad, or Sarsina. Uh, be able to describe the three different arrangements of bacilli and recognize them. And be able to describe three different spiral forms and recognize them. So in the first lab, uh, I'm cutting down a great deal on what you have to show me during the semester because, again, of trying to keep things as socially distant as we can. Uh, but I will be asking you to show me two slides that you focused on during lab one. And I'll be asking you the shape or the arrangement or the form, and you should be able to answer that to get your uh, core points for that lab. Now, also, what I've done to help prepare you for that 
Uh, as you go through the lab, you'll see lots of pictures of these different shapes, arrangements, and forms. But at the end of the lab, there's also a section where I've given you 15 practice slides where you can quiz yourself. And don't forget also for lab one, besides the fact that you have to know bacterial shapes, arrangements, and forms coming in, that is these objectives. Don't forget there is a pre-lab quiz for lab one and videos to watch. Now let me use uh, this lab to show you how the lab manual is set up since these are instructions for lab one. So if we go back up to our menu for under lab rather than lecture, right there we see lab. Uh, so first of all, this is a link to your online lab manual. So if you click there, this will take you to the lab manual and we are doing lab one. Uh, the second week of class, the first meeting of the second week of class. So if we take a look at how the lab manual is set up, I'll, I'll use this to explain how the, online, how, how the online lab manual works. Now the hard copy of the lab manual that you're buying at the bookstore or printing yourself, um, you need to bring to lab so that you have something in front of you that you can use to follow the procedure or look things up quickly. We can't have any electronic devices out on the lab benches. No laptops, no tablets, no cell phones. Those could get contaminated with potentially harmful bacteria or ruined with stains and other reagents. So you want to have a hard copy just to bring to lab, but you want to use this online lab manual to study because this has pictures of everything we look at, every petri plate we inoculate, every tube we inoculate, there are color pictures. So this gives you all the information to prepare for lab and to take the quizzes. So the first page of the lab manual tells you whether or not there's a pre-lab quiz and videos to watch. And this is the part you have to know for lab one, part A, bacterial shapes, arrangements, and forms. So here's your three shapes to answer that objectives. Coccus, bacillus, and spiral. So you need to know those names and recognize those shapes. We see the cocci, which are spherical bacteria, come in five different arrangements. Diplococcus, streptococcus, uh, tetrad, sarsina, or staphylococcus. And again, there are pictures that show you in a diagram what they look like, but uh, the real thing is never as pretty as the diagrams. So again, I've given you a lot of pictures to look at, like this of a streptococcus, which are cocci in chains of varying length. Or a staphylococcus, uh, which are cocci in irregular grape-like clusters. You also have to recognize the three different arrangements of bacilli, which are bacillus, streptobacillus, and cocobacillus. And again, there's pictures of each one of those. That's a single bacillus, which are hot dog shaped bacteria. And if they're bacilli in chains, that's a streptobacillus. Strepto means chain. So streptococcus is a chain of cocci, streptobacillus is a chain of bacilli. And since the spirals don't come in arrangements, they're individual single cells, they come in three different forms. Vibrio, spirillum, and spirochete. And again, there's pictures and illustrations of each one of those you can look at. We're also going to be looking at a eukaryotic organism. Remember, bacteria are prokaryotic and are much smaller typically than eukaryotic cells. But we're going to look at some baker's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, under the microscope, which is a single-celled fungus. And again, we'll notice how much bigger the eukaryotic yeast is compared to the prokaryotic bacterium. You're also going to be measuring these in bacteria, uh, bacteria in lab using an ocular micrometer, a measuring scale in the eyepiece. And that becomes superimposed on the bacteria. So as you go through the lab manual, you'll see that when we're using oil immersion microscopy or a thousand magnification, the distance between any two lines represents about one micrometer. So a single bacterium here, the single coccus would be one micrometer in diameter. This chain of streptococcus would be five micrometers long. So that's how the scales work. And again, you can read through that and see that. 
These are your eight steps that guarantee you will see stuff under the microscope if you follow them step by step. If you don't follow them step by step, we also guarantee you'll see nothing. So there's nothing hard about using a microscope. You just have to follow some simple instructions. And so the videos go through that step by step. I'll go through the focusing instructions with you in the first lab and show you uh, the various steps involved. And then we'll let you start focusing. But those are your focusing steps. And whenever we use the microscope, you want to go back and review these focusing steps. Uh, in any lab where we use the microscope, there'll be a link back to this lab where you can review the focusing steps because you're liable to forget them if several labs go by. And finally, in the lab manual, we get to the laboratory procedure itself, any specimens that we're using that day. So we're going to look at four prepared sites of bacteria. We're going to look at Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, Trepanema pallidum, Spirillum species. Uh, we're also going to do some online pictures so you can practice recognizing shapes and arrangements. And you're going to make a wet mound of baker's yeast. Uh, we probably won't get to the human hair, but we'll be able to do this in the lab period. So the first step tells you that using oil immersion microscopy, we're going to observe these four slides. And you're going to show me two of those four. Now keep in mind, use the lab manual. I'll be coming around asking you what the shape or the arrangement or the form is, but it tells you right here what it is. If you're looking at Staphylococcus aureus, first of all, it's named after its arrangement, unlike most bacteria. So if it's a Staphylococcus you're looking at, it's going to have a Staphylococcus arrangement. Cocci in irregular grape-like clusters. And uh, you'll be measuring the diameter of a single coccus, but again, it also shows you a picture of what it should look like. So again, uh, you want to make sure it looks like that when you're focusing on it, and then call me over so you can show that to me. In fact, we'll focus this one together as a class so you can see how easy it is. And then after you finish that, you can look at E. coli, a small bacillus. Trepanema pallidum, a spirochete, which is a thin, flexible spiral. And finally, spirillum, which is a thick, rigid spiral. Then I've given you four links so you can practice recognizing shapes and arrangements. You can just click on those. So those are online demos. You're going to make a wet mount of baker's yeast following these instructions. This is what it will look like under the microscope. It's unstained, so we're looking at living yeast. And we're going to notice how much bigger this eukaryotic yeast is than a prokaryotic bacteria. One of these dots inside the yeast is actually about the size of a coccus-shaped bacterium. And we probably won't get to the hair. Then in your hard copy, as you look at these, you're going to record results, your diameter in micrometers, the shape of the arrangement, I'm going to do that for each of the four bacteria we're looking at. Uh, for the ones you practice, you can just write shape and arrangements. You won't be measuring those because those are online. And there's also a picture of the yeast you can look at. And again, there's a picture. Uh, if you hit there, that'll show you what it should look like. Now, the final important part of each lab is at the end of each lab are performance objectives, the equivalent of the detail learning objectives that you need to know for your lecture soft chalk lessons. Except here, they're at the end of the lab manual. So when you finish this lab, uh, you should be able to do these objectives. Now, any objectives that come under discussion, these are questions covering content in that lab, uh, tested for by multiple choice, matching, and short answer questions. So you can have multiple choice matching or short answer questions on any of those objectives. Any objectives under results would be practical questions. So every lab quiz, in addition to theoretical stuff, has a practical component. So for example, in this lab, uh, you should be able to um, determine the size of an organism. Now, of course, since we're doing our lab quizzes online, you won't be focusing yourself, but they will have pictures show you that with a scale on them. Using a microscope, you should identify the different bacterial shapes, arrangements, and forms. Again, not the name of the organism, not the genus and species, but the shape or the arrangement or the form, whatever I ask for. You should be able to differentiate a yeast from a coccus-shaped bacterium by size. So again, there'll be measuring scales. Uh, we're gonna see that the larger eukaryotic yeast are about three to five micrometers in diameter whereas a coccus-shaped bacterium is typically about one-half to one micrometer in diameter, much smaller. 
Also at the end of every lab is a self quiz you can do. Uh, just to quiz yourself. So if you click on that, you'll get a series of questions you can answer. And then if you click on answers, you can get the answers to those questions to quiz yourself. And as I mentioned, to help prepare you for lab one, where you need to recognize the different shapes, arrangements, and forms, at the end of the online manual are 15 practice slides with answers. So you click on a picture, uh, state what you think that um, shape and arrangement is, and then you can click on the answer to see if you're correct. So that's how the lab manual is set up and how lab one is set up, which we'll be doing again as our first lab, the second week of class, the first actual lab. So those are your important instructions for lab that we just talked about. And of course, make sure your CCBC email is updated. Uh, when I send emails to the class, it'll be through your CCBC email. And also I can't answer any grade questions unless it's a CCBC email. Now let's go back up to our table of contents. Uh, part of the introduction is also understanding where to find everything. So again, we have the announcements we've just covered. I've shown you where to find the Getting Started course tour and how to take the course tour quiz, where to find the material for your biology review exam to review, and uh, how to take the biology review exam. I've showed you the course calendar. If you need another copy of your syllabus, the syllabus is there. Detailed course information is all the stuff in your syllabus plus some. Uh, we're limited to how long a syllabus can be when we do paper copies but all the important information you need to know about anything in the course can be found under detailed course information hitting these links here. So if you have any questions on anything like the, uh, what we're using for our text, your soft chalk lessons, your lab manual, uh, my course rationale and teaching philosophy, how you're evaluated in lecture, how you're evaluated in lab, how you determine your final grade, lecture schedule, lab schedule, exam quiz dates, all of that can be found under detailed course information. Much of that's also in your syllabus. If you get really bored and want to learn about me, uh, there's a little information about me. I am a musician in my other life, as you might gather from that. But I learned a long time ago that uh, music isn't a very good way to make a living. Not if you want to eat three meals, meals a day, have a car to drive, and not live at home with your folks like when I was younger. So it's not a very good way to make a living, but it makes a nice hobby, whereas microbiology is not a very good hobby, but it's a pretty nice way to make a living. So anyway, I'm still in a couple of bands, still like to play music. Those are some of my instruments. I've added a few since then, not that you're interested, a bass saxophone, a bass flute. Uh, Etc. And of course, you can find your grades under my grades. As soon as you take something on Blackboard on a respondents, it's automatically recorded. Uh, now, as far as course content, again, uh, to get to your soft chalk lessons, the videos of your soft chalk lessons, you just click on lecture. So again, there's your soft chalk lessons. There's the videos. And if you do want a hard copy for some reason, you can either buy it in the bookstore or you can print it off lecture by lecture uh, by clicking on those. But again, uh, there's not much of a need for a hard copy unless you just like to have one with you. Now, when students take a face-to-face -face lecture, I often have them bring a hard copy so they can follow along because I use these soft chalk lessons for my lecture. Uh, so in a traditional class that's face-to-face, -face, students would either bring a laptop or a tablet or a hard copy. But since you're doing this virtually online, uh, you don't really need hard copies, but you do have the videos of the soft chalk less, uh, lessons and of course your actual soft chalk lessons up here. Your lecture exams and lab quizzes will be posted here. Right now it says there's no content to display. Uh, unit one exam and lab quiz one have already been loaded in but they won't be available until the day of the ex exam or the day of the quiz. And again, the dates can be found in your course calendar. And I'll be reminding you of those in lab and putting them on the board as well. 
And then of course, lab content is under lab, like we pointed out earlier. So you can find, you can click on this to get to your online lab manual. I don't know why it's giving you that little problem there. If you click on it twice, usually it gets rid of, there it is. Uh, so there's the online lab manual when you want to, and again, that's what you're going to use. Uh, there is content there. I don't know what this is doing. I just showed you that a few minutes ago. So getting a little computer glitches. Uh, you can buy the hard copy of the lab manual in the bookstore, or you can print it yourself from this link at home. Now, I also have soft chalk instructions for each lab uh, that gives you an idea of how to prepare for the lab. So, for example, let's take lab three. Uh, if we click on that, then it tells you that uh, in the soft chalk lesson there that there is a pre-lab quiz. These are the videos you need to watch, and then you have to take your, uh, your pre-lab quiz. And again, they're not really on Respondus, uh, they're just on Blackboard. The, the test is actually a Respondus exam, but you don't have to use Respondus for those. And I've also made a Zoom video of my introduction. So the stuff I would normally give you, I will be giving you in class that introduces that lab. I've also provided a Zoom video of that same information where I go through the lab kind of page by page. And it tells you you're gonna record your results and pick up uh, what we'll be doing the following lab, et cetera. And then I've also shown you pictures of all the results. So again, you can get these from your lab man online lab manual itself. There's a color picture there. And I've also put those same results in the soft chalk lesson so you can view them there as well. So there's various ways in which you can see the results of the lab, either by clicking on the online lab manual or by clicking uh, the online lab manual here, you can see them, or by clicking on the soft chalk lesson for that. In either case, you'll see a list of the videos you need to watch and what the results look like to help you prepare for quizzes. Uh, your pre-lab quizzes, again, uh, I showed you are here. So remember, lab one has videos you need to watch and a pre-lab quiz you need to take. Now the puzzles and concept maps, um, other than a creative project at the end, which I'll mention later in the semester, um, the only extra credit are crossword puzzles. And as I mentioned, I have concept maps for every lecture in every lab. Now the, you have a direct link to the concept maps in the lab, it's online lab manual itself and in the soft chalk lessons themselves. But you can also get them from this link. And this is how you get your crossword puzzles. So if you click on that, uh, you have a crossword puzzle for your unit one exam, unit two, unit three, unit four, unit five, unit six, and for each of the five lab quizzes. So if you click on any one of those, that'll take you to a crossword puzzle that you can print out along with the, uh, the clues for the crossword puzzle. And you will fill that out and then uh, email me just a picture of the crossword puzzle. Don't forget in the subject line to indicate that that's a crossword puzzle for unit one or lab quiz one and to indicate your lab section when you email that. And as I mentioned, there's also a concept map for every soft chalk lesson. Uh, I told you about the one we did, showed you this soft chalk lesson a few minutes ago. So the concept map I showed you there in the green box was what we call the finished concept map that you can use to review. So if you click on that, that takes you to the whole concept map with the interactive links that take you to animations and illustrations. But what I've also done for each of these is give you what's called an unfinished map and keywords to fill in the boxes. So in other words, instead of the finished map, I've left some boxes empty and then I've given you a list of keywords and phrases that can go in those boxes. And so you can use that as a way to quiz yourself.
So if we look at here, uh, you should be able to fill in this like gram-positive bacteria, and uh, we know that those stain purple with a gram stain, gram-negative stain pink, acid-fast stain bacteria stain a reddish color with the acid-fast stain. Uh, enzymes that break the glycosidic bonds and the peptide cross-links so that new monomers can be inserted, those would be auto-licensed. So again, if you've studied that material or learning it, you should be able to fill in those boxes for the key phrases that on that separate page and use that as a way to kind of quiz yourself or to help learn the material. So again, those are optional, but they're there if you want to use them. So again, we have concept maps for all of our soft chalk lessons, all of our labs. And uh, finally, under lab safety here, um, if you are immunocompromised or are become pregnant, uh, you might want to have a list of all the microorganisms and all the chemicals we use. So you can click on that. And you can print that off and share that with your healthcare provider. And then I also have the uh, safety data sheets for all the chemicals we use. You can print those off if you ever need them for any reason. These are also in lab uh, available at any time. And the last thing here is contacting me and you're gonna contact me by my CCBC email, not the Blackboard messaging, but CCBC email. Uh, I would prefer you didn't use the phone. You can leave a message there because of course I'm there on campus for labs, but on days I don't have labs or when I'm done with labs and have to come home and do the Zoom videos or the Zoom office hours, of course, then I won't be checking my phone at school. So the best way to contact me is by email or to uh, ask me questions uh, right after lab when I have my in-person office hours in lab or in my Zoom office hours. And that pretty much takes care of the stuff that's in the table of contents. Last thing I wanna mention a little bit is on testing and grading in your syllabus. And to get the syllabus in, I got to take editing off. So again, this is in your Getting Started course tour. It's under detailed course information. It's also in your syllabus. So I'm not gonna go through the whole syllabus, of course, that's your responsibility to read that, but let's get down to uh, evaluation, which is on page five of the syllabus. So lecture is 70% of your grade, lab is 30%. Because we have a couple of lab reports you'll be writing, details will come on that later on. Uh, you'll be showing me stuff in lab, you'll be doing pre-lab quizzes. Uh, we make lab worth 30%. Also, our lab quizzes generally take about 45 minutes to an hour to do. So these aren't 10 minute quizzes. So because we're having you learn content as well as hands-on in lab, we give you more credit for the lab, 30%. But again, 70% of the grade is still based on your soft chalk lectures. So study-wise, you wanna put 70% of your time on that, 30% on lab. And you have to pass both lab and lecture with a grade of 60% or higher to pass, pass the class. Uh, if either your lab or your lecture is below 60, you receive an F for the course. That's college, or that is SOMS policy, School of Math and Science. This is the grading scale we use. So uh, grading in lecture, we have six lecture units that we cover with a soft chalk lesson. And those will be uh, taken using Respondus Monitor with webcam. The questions are a combination of uh, matching, multiple choice, and true-false questions. And again, they directly test your understanding of the detailed learning objectives found at the beginning of every soft chalk lesson. So that's what you have to learn for your exams, those detailed learning objectives. Uh, it explains again, single asterisks are a common theme throughout the course, double asterisks we need to know in greater depth. And they not only test your knowledge of the topic, but also your understanding of the process and your ability to apply that knowledge, like in the think, pair, share questions. So there's always some questions on that. 
And again, those will be taken on Blackboard using Respondus Monitor plus webcam. So we have single tests on Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4. Your final exam is just the last two units in the course, Units 5 and 6, on immunology, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. So there's not a comprehensive final exam. Your final exam covers the last two units in the course. And you'll be doing a final lab project in lab that culminates in a paper during the last uh, couple weeks of class. And uh, that final lab project, although we're doing it in lab, I count as part of your lecture grade because it's combining some lecture knowledge with lab knowledge, your ability to use critical thinking, uh, and your ability to follow instructions. And again, as I mentioned, uh, we need to understand stuff you learned about in your general biology course, stuff regarding enzymes, DNA, RNA, protein synthesis, and such. So again, you'll be doing your molecular genetics review exam that I showed you about, your biology review exam was called. That'll be part of your lecture grade. Uh, now it says no one's allowed to make up more than one Mr. lecture exam. That's assuming things go as normal. However, uh, as, as happened during my summer session, the se at the end of the second week, one of my students became infected with SARS-CoV-2, and we had to go in quarantine for two weeks of summer session and switch to online labs and online lectures. So if that type of stuff happens, uh, things get a little more iffy. But it's very hard to do makeup tests when we're using Respondus online uh, because you can only set it up for the whole class to take. You can't do it for individually for some student to do it at a different time than someone else. So it is very hard to do makeups. We'll find a way around it if we have to, uh, but that should, hopefully it won't happen at all. And uh, typically no more than one missed lecture exam. If there were real hardships that happened to occur, like you did become infected uh, and missed a period of time because of that, then uh, we would consider whether it'd be better for you to withdraw or take an incomplete or something like that. But again, try to take the exams on date because it's very difficult to do makeups. We can't use the testing center for makeups anymore. They don't have the space or the personnel to do that. So we're stuck with online. Now there's an optional creative project. That's the only other extra credit. And that's worth up to five points added to the total points you learn in le lecture. Not five points to your average, obviously, five points to the total points. So I'd be like adding five points to a lecture exam if you did that. And the idea there is to have a little bit of fun with microbiology. Do something creative that's related to micro. It could be drawings, paintings, posters, mobiles, sculptures, songs, poems, games. And for all those that say, I'm not creative, what am I going to do? Uh, and the, during the last week of lab, you can bring in something edible related to micro, such as typical things like cupcakes or cakes with microbiology motifs drawn in frosting, or cookies shaped like bacteria with without licorice, flagella, etc. Uh, just anything creative that is related to micro. And if you turn one in, uh, and we'll uh, we'll be. Um, turning these in in class unless something happens and we have to go online, in which case we'll be emailing them. But anyway, that will be due uh, by the day we do lab quiz five. So you have until the last lab quiz of the semester to do a creative project if you want to. And again, that's worth at up to five points extra credit. So since we have uh, 11 crossword puzzles and five, uh, the, uh, the creative project, that's your extra credit. Uh, six points for lecture crossword puzzles, five points for the creative project can be added to your lecture total points, and five points can be added to your lab total points from the five lab quiz crossword puzzles. And this is one I really need to point out because this becomes troublesome some kind. Uh, do not come to me the last week or two of the semester or after your final grade is posted and say, is there any extra credit I can do? I have to have an A in this course and I didn't get one. Um, no, you have all semester long to earn points. And if you don't take time to earn those points early on, there's nothing you can do later on. The nursing program, the dental hygiene program, the PA programs are not going to give you extra points, uh, extra credit projects where you copy something online and submit it and say that that is better than actually learning the content. Uh, 
So again, you need to earn those points all semester long and the extra credit I've already mentioned. So if you want that A, it's your job to earn those points starting on the first week of class. And once you've turned in your final exam is graded, I won't respond to any questions about, can I do extra credit? It's stated right here, no. You've had your chance for extra credit. So again, uh, and we can only have a very small percentage of the grade that is extra credit. The rest has to be uh, monitor testing or reports or other such things. You'll be earning some lab core points. Uh, that's based on the pre-lab quizzes that we do. I believe there's 99 points total on the pre-lab quizzes. And then each lab that we meet in person uh, is worth five points in performance in lab. And that's basically being prepared for lab, correctly following the directions and following the safety rules. So if you're there, you're following safety rules, you know what you're doing, you get the five points for those labs. If you don't, you lose some of those points. So collectively, the pre-lab quizzes and the performance points in labs under part B there are worth a total of 159 points in your lab grade. Uh, you can only miss one core lab, uh, where you, if you miss one, you could still get your, uh, you could miss one lab and you, there wouldn't be any points deducted. Uh, but there's no way to make up missed core labs, especially in these times. Uh, we're going to be doing a case-based identification of bacterial unknowns in lab. This will be for labs 12 and 15 and the final project. I didn't change in the syllabus, but I've mentioned in your lab manual that we're not going to submit a lab report on lab 14. Just cut down a little. So you have three lab reports you'll be turning in, one for lab 12, one for lab 15, and your final group project you turn in at the end of the semester based on what we do in the last couple of weeks of lab. And I'll give you much more information about that later on. Uh, we don't come to lab 12 till almost halfway through the semester, so uh, there's no reason to go over the details of that now. Uh, these are not actually papers, but you're filling in a lab report showing critical thinking on how you determine based on a case study what infection the person has, and then based on the microbiologic tests we do, what organism is causing the infection. So we'll talk more about that later on, but that's part of your lab grade. And then we have five major lab quizzes. They're worth anywhere from 45 to 60 points each. Uh, we have them after about every four labs, but again, your course calendar tells you what quizzes or what labs each quiz covers. And again, the lab quizzes are a combination of multiple choice, matching, short answer, and practical questions. And they come directly from the performance objectives found at the lab, end of each lab exercises. Uh, of course, we won't be giving them in lab this semester. We're going to take them using Respondus Monitor with webcam. And the reason for that uh, is, again, we're trying to cut down on having to pass out handouts and extra handling of papers, me having to handle the papers to grade them and all of that. So we're trying to cut down on all that type of contact and do as much as we can online. Again, very difficult to make up a lab quiz when we're doing them online. Uh, no one can miss more than one missed lab quiz. Uh, so try to take them during the scheduled times. A um, couple other things under attendance, uh, of course, in, uh, there is no lecture attendance, obviously, now, uh, but attendance is critical in lab. So, of course, um, if you miss a core lab, um, each one of those is worth five points. You can miss one and it doesn't count, but any more than you get deducted five, you lose those five core points. And if you miss more than five labs during the semester, you automatically receive an F. And then uh, under course related materials to kind of end up, uh, it's very important that you, that lab starts when it's supposed to start. So your lab start time, the one that's posted uh, as your start time is the time I actually begin lab, not the time you come in and start putting on your equipment. You already have a, that, have to have that done by the start of lab. 
you have to have your protective gear on and ready to hear the instructions start lab. Uh, if you're not, core points can be deducted because it's disrupting the class. And this is very important in this COVID-19 time uh, because we have all this extra equipment. We can't do, uh, we try to follow social distancing as much as we can. So you need to get there at least 15 minutes early so you have time to wash your hands. We have to do before every lab. Put on your lab coat. You already have your face mask on then. Put on your face shield, put on your gloves, disinfect your bench top. All of that has to be done. And there isn't time to use class time for that. That can take up to 10 minutes to do. And then you have to take all that stuff out and store it when you're done. And again, we can't, don't have that class time to waste on that. So you need to have all your protective gear on and ready to start lab at the designated start time. If things go a little slow in some of the labs, I will hang around a little longer and let, since la, uh, there is no lecture following lab since it's online now. Uh, but again, we want to try to end the lab on time too, so we can take advantage of the office hours and all of that. So again, make sure you're there at least 15 minutes early for every lab. I'll have the door open so you can come in and start getting your gear out. Plus, we have to get out the results of anything that's in the incubator from the previous lab. So again, all that takes time, and we need the lab class time to actually do that day's lab and look at the results of any previous labs that are incubating. So anyway, those are a few things in the syllabus. And finally, I'll talk about the summon class, but at the end of the syllabus, I have the big picture of infectious disease, my approach to the course. And what we're doing here is giving you a college level micro course, but one that's relative to uh, the professions you're going into. Probably no one is taking microbiology because they were looking through the class catalog and thought, oh, microbiology, I bet that would be fun to do. You're taking this because it's a prerequisite for nursing or dental hygiene or PA school or med school or some other uh, career like that. So everything is related to medicine here. We give you all the principles you would learn, but make it relative to your future careers. So here's the way we kind of divide up the course. We're going to look at the microbe side of the story, because as we'll see in our first lecture, very few microbes are harmful to humans. Many are beneficial, others are not beneficial, nor are they harmful. So what makes those few that are harmful able to harm the body? The overwhelming majority are harmless. So as we go through there, we're going to learn the various factors they possess that allow them to colonize the body and allow them to harm the body. And how they can, through mutation and genetic recombination, uh, often alter their virulence abilities and offer their a sensitivity to antibiotics. We're also going to look at the body side of the story, how the body defends itself naturally against infectious agents. We have phenomenal immune defenses in our body as shown by the fact that most of us do not have infections or cancer most of the time. That's because our immune systems are working well. So we do this through the innate immune system and through the adaptive immune system. We'll take up innate immunity in unit five and adaptive immunity in unit six, but we're going to introduce concepts of innate and adaptive immunity throughout all of the lecture units. So it's all kind of combined together to give us the big picture. So by the time we get to immunology at the end, a lot of that material we already talked about in the first four units, looking at the microbe side of the story. We'll be looking at the ways in which we can artificially help the body defend itself, either by removing microbes from the environment or enhancing our body defenses. Ways we can control bacteria in the environment using heat, cold, disinfectants, antiseptics, uh, how we can treat infections using antimicrobial chemotherapeutic agents and antibiotics, how we can uh, improve or restore the immune responses, through techniques like immunization, adaptive immunotherapy, immune modulation, all that's relevant relevant in this time of COVID-19. And of course, we also have to consider the role of the human microbiome in human health. In our first lecture, we're going to talk about uh, the bacteria that inhabit our body and how we couldn't function without them, and how most of the time we are actually more prokaryotic than eukaryotic. 
So these mutually beneficial symbiotic relationships between humans and their natural microbes is critical to good health. And the way, because of our changes in lifestyle, uh, we've modified our normal microbiota and that's caused a lot of problems uh, in terms of health problems. And we'll talk about that quite a bit in unit one, but we'll be talking about that throughout the course too. So that's kind of the goal here to look at the microbe side of the story, how they do what they do, how the body defends itself naturally, how we can artificially help our body uh, through our advances in medicine, and the role our own microbiota play in body defense. So that is our introduction to microbiology. And I look forward to seeing you all in class the first week in class and uh, look forward to a good semester with you. Take care.